You okay? <laughs> oh, okay. I still, I still really want to mess with the sound man and sit there and say, good, how are you? Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> Ford would not have a problem, but Chauncey may have a heart attack. So, Good morning. We welcome you to the gathering. We're so glad that you are worshiping with us. We thank you all who are a part of the last row. Um, that's those who are watching on video. Uh, that's part of it. You have uh, connection pads that are in the rows there. If you will sign that. When it comes time to offering, if you will tear that out and drop it in the basket, that would be wonderful. We're so glad that you are here and worshiping with us. There's a lot of stuff in the ringer that you want to take note of in this I have, if, if you were planning on getting an angel tree person, you're out of luck, okay? They all went really quick. Uh, there was 15 left before we started this morning, and before Sig got up and did his opening welcome, there was only six left, and so those have been taken, and so yes, which praise God, I mean, yes, we, we have that all taken care of, and so you see all that. Um, the, the cantata, next Sunday, 3 o'clock. If you get here at 5 to 3, you will not have a good seat, okay? All right, plan for that a little bit, uh, and it's going to be a good thing. Take note of the holiday office schedule, okay, and, and the, 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 Christmas, uh, the, the Christmas worship schedule. Because uh, so, December uh, 24, Christmas Eve, falls on a Sunday. Uh, New Year's Eve falls on a Sunday, so we're going to go just with one service, okay? All right? And so that one service will be in the main sanctuary, all right? And, and I'll give you a little heads up. We have the December 31st service. Yeah. Yeah. No robe. Yes. It's awesome. It's awesome. So anyhow, that's what we've got planned. Please take note of all of that. Uh, and there's different office hours that are going to be taking place as well. Just take note as, as we do the different things that we're going to do. All right, so just take note of So our beginning and opening of today is because we have, this is the first Sunday of Advent. It's not only the first Sunday of Advent, but the first Sunday of the Christian year. So Al, you want to come up and I will give you the cue here, but Al's going to help me light the Advent candle. And so if you will be in a time of meditation... In the ninth chapter of Isaiah, the two, second to seventh verse, it says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied exultation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. As people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their impression, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Great will be his authority, and there will be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We join with sisters and brothers around the world lighting candles to mark our steps in the Advent journey. Today, we light the candle of hope. All right. Let us pray. God of hope, even though the world seems dark and cold, we know that the light of Christ is coming. The face of our Lord will shine and we shall be saved. Standing against all suffering and darkness, we kindle this light. Together we proclaim to the world that in Jesus we have hope. Amen. Let's begin our worship or continue our worship by opening with our opening song. Let's please stand if you're able. We're in a period of waiting, but we know what's at the end of the wait, and it's going to fill us with joy, but we can start with that today. So this is a song you guys know. There's a few little things in it that might not be familiar, but just sing with us because we want to make a joyful <coughs> noise to the Lord. <coughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs>
first reading comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 20 through 21. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. It's to love and adore you with all of my heart, with all of my soul forever. Lord, I fall at your altar in sweet surrender, and I've never known a mercy so tender. It's healing my heart, it's healing my soul. worship you, Jesus, my Savior, my King. I bow down at your feet. I bow down at your feet. I bow down to worship you. broken before you and my heart's desire is to love and adore you with all of my heart with all of my soul forever Lord I fall at your altar in sweet surrender and I've never known a mercy so tender is healing my heart, is healing my soul forever.
You may be seated. Someone have a praise this morning you want to share? Yes. Your aunt celebrated her 100th birthday. All right. Yes. Praise be to God. Yes. Yes. She living by herself? She's a little fireball, isn't she? Yeah. Understand. Understand. Who else has got a joy this morning you'd like to share? Okay. Amen. Amen. And I could have saved you a whole lot of money and said, don't listen to the news. And you would have. <laughs> but, but, you know, you do you. You do you. That's okay. That's okay. That's all right. All right. Yes. I'm, I'm just thankful for all the decorations in yes. here. Yes. Yes. You know, that just kind of gets us in the mood for the season. On, on Tuesday and Thursday and parts of Friday, maybe. They all came up, so <laughs> no, it, it, no, just kidding. No, just kidding. No, it, it's been it's been really nice to see, and they've they've added a little bit and some things they're re redoing, and and so yes, yes, and and we we got the tree up and we realized that we couldn't put it in front of the screen, so so you know hey it's all right, we're flexible, we do it. That's all, that's all. That's awesome. Any other joys this morning? All right, well, we're going to continue our joys. One of the greatest joys is to uh, allow God to have and receive uh, our tithes and offerings. They're his anyhow, and so for his blessing to be upon that. If you remember, take your attendance pad thing. If you'll tear that out, put it in here as well. These just go back and forth all the way down. Back. little editorial comment. Ladies, have you ever thought about how it was to be Mary, the mother of Jesus? So, from Luke, chapter 1, verses 34 to 38. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered, May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her.
chosen me now to carry your son. I am waiting in a silent prayer. I am frightened by the load I Thank you. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Do you have a name that you'd like to lift up in prayer this morning? Just, just give me a name if you've got one. Yes. Janice and Bill. Rick and Cheryl. Glenn and Linda. Steve. The Grant family and George. Brant. Brant family and George. Baby. Yes. Larry. Kim, Patty, Brandon, Chip, Annabelle, Cindy, yes, Rachel, Kim, 
Darlene, uh, don't sit down. You, because um, we're going to have the Stephen ministers. I'm, I'll just, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> when I when I go into my pastoral prayer, um, we have a couple of Stephen ministers here. Well, we got three. Uh, Terry, if you if you'll just stand over there, if you'd like to do some one-on-one -on -one prayer time with them, okay. Here, and here's the neat thing about here. The only way that the video or any of that will pick up, that's why I have to repeat everything, is because you have to have a microphone. It will not pick up stuff that's in the room. So, so if your loved one that you're near screams out in pain for any reason or whatsoever, uh, the camera will not pick it up, okay? It will not happen. So, but anyhow, the, the Stephen ministers are there. If you're like, man, just, I just need some one-on-one -on -one time. And I would encourage you to go to them or have them come to you uh, if you can't make it over to them and just have some prayer time with them. Any other prayer names that we need to lift up? Well, then let's go before the Lord in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we come to you. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, your strength, your power, and your might. Father God, a long time ago, long time ago, you took a group of people across the desert. And they had a hard part. There was people pushing from behind that wanted to take care of them and take them out. And they had a sea in front of them where they couldn't go any further. And during that time, you parted the waters. They made it onto dry ground. Father God, I, I pray that you'll search our hearts. Because during these holidays, during these times where we begin our new year, we begin with thoughts of, of decorations and the greatest gift that we ever got, and that was you, O oh Lord. But in the midst of that, some of us are between a rock and a hard place. We ask that you'd part the waters again. Some are struggling emotionally, financially. Or maybe they are looking at this world, oh Lord, and feeling just so completely helpless. What can we do? Part the waters again, O oh Lord. Father, help us to show Christ to this world. Help us to love like you loved. Help us not to be apprehensive to give a helping hand. Lord, we ask all of these things in the great name of Jesus the Christ. He taught us to pray a special prayer. And as a family now, we pray that together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Our scripture passage comes out of the book of Isaiah. There's two parts to this in chapter 7, verse 14, and then in chapter 9, 6, and 7. In Isaiah, the, the, seventh, the, the seventh chapter, verse 14, it says, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. We go over to verses 6 and 7 in chapter 9. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you bow your heads one more time? Almighty and gracious God, I pray that you will rescue me from me. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will pour on me, through me, around me, and with me. Father, I pray that your Spirit will use me as a vessel. Let it be your words, not mine. Your heart, not mine. Father, I pray for your empowerment at this time and your strength. But Father, when it's all said and done, for me, give me no glory. All glory belongs to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. This is titled Peace Child. This account was written as a book entitled Peace Child by Don Richardson. In 1962, the Sawi people of New Guinea still lived in relative isolation. They were head-hunting cannibals. Their culture could not be more different from that of Don and Carol Richardson, and yet this missionary couple attempted to share Christ with them. In fact, two rival Sawi tribes, fascinated by the Richardsons, moved their villages right around the missionary's jungle home. But Don became frustrated by his inability to find a point of contact. He was also discouraged by the 14 civil wars he had already counted right outside his front door now that the two tribes lived side by side. Eventually, the Richardsons decided to leave. However, the Sawi tribe response surprised them. If you'll stay, we promise we'll make peace in the morning. The next morning, the Richardsons awoke to see the most amazing ritual they'd ever witnessed. The two tribes were lined up outside their houses on either side of the clearing. Finally, one man dashed into his hut, grabbed his newborn son, and began to run across the meadow toward the other tribe. His expression betrayed absolute agony. His wife ran after him, screaming and begging him to give the baby back to her, but her husband wouldn't stop. He ran over to the other tribe and presented the boy to them. Plead the peace child for me. I give you my son. I give you my name, he said. Moments later, someone from, the tribe, from that tribe performed the same agonizing sacrifice with the same intensity and passion. Richardson found out later that as long as those two children remained alive, the tribes were bound by peace. If they died, then literally all hell would break loose. Cannibalism, murder, and civil war. While this amazing scene unfolded before him, Don suddenly realized that this was the analogy he needed to communicate Christ. The next time he spoke to the Sawi elders, he told them of the perfect peace child, Jesus. Eventually, droves of Sawi became followers of Christ. Several years later, on Christmas Day, hundreds of Sawi people were from every tribe, tribes that had warred and cannibalized each other for years, came together to hear about the birth of the ultimate peace child. Gives you that warm fuzzy, doesn't it? See, this is a prophecy. This is a prophecy of what we read. Isaiah is giving the prophecy. Isaiah prophesied of the Lord's ultimate deliverance of his faithless people through the Messiah. Where it begins is the king of Judah, evil king Ahaz, was in, was in a war. He was in the midst of a war. God said to him, and get this, God said to him, ask me what you a sign. Ask me for a sign. Ask me, and, and guess what king Ahaz, he refused. I ain't going to ask him. I ain't going to ask you, God. No. So Isaiah came into the picture, and he gave the prophecy. See, God had not given up on Judah. God sent Isaiah. It was a message of comfort. 
Many thought it was going to happen right away. Later, the prophecy became fact. Matthew 1, 23, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The virgin, and it says the virgin, was never intended to be Mary at that early stages. They thought it was something with Isaiah and, and a virgin that he had with, with him. No, it wasn't. But they found out. See, God doesn't necessarily answer prophecy right away. Sometimes he waits. The baby called Emmanuel, God with us. God manifested in the flesh, which makes this Messiah both human and divine. Yeah, wrap that one around your head. Both human and divine. Done in the midst of war, the names given the Messiah's royal titles attest to a close relationship with God and depict him as a mighty warrior. As the first understanding of these titles, they saw the Messiah as a warrior, that warrior who's going to come and take over in Jesus' time then is the Roman rule. So you have wonderful counselor, which means Messiah as an extraordinary military strategist. Mighty God indicates God, that God would energize him for battle so that he would display superhuman proudness against his enemies. Everlasting Father, a Messiah concerned for his people. Prince of Peace, a Messiah's kingdom will be characterized by social justice and prosperity. They were waiting for this Messiah. They were waiting for this great God, this great warrior to come in and be. And then Jesus comes in on a donkey. Okay, now don't get me wrong, if we get to that passage sometime or whatever, you know, we find out that a donkey, was, it was not a white horse. That is a John Wayne picture, okay? But back then, the sign of great humility, the warriors would come in on a donkey, but they were looking at Jesus going, that's him? That can't be the Messiah. There's no way. We see that in Luke 19. See, the prophecy is of the coming rule of Jesus on earth. So let's break down Isaiah 9, verses 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born. Do not miss it. If all you see is the child, you've missed it. If all you see is for unto, you've missed it. You've got to understand the purpose of Christ's coming was for us. Don't miss the us. Unto us a son given. Isaiah prophesied that God's, prophesied, but God planned. All right? Isaiah prophesied, but God planned. This was already in the works. This was not something that just happened. It's planned. And it wasn't a freeze plan. Because a freeze plan fails every single time. My last name is Freeze. If someone didn't catch that part of it, I'm saying I'll fill in the holes here in a little bit, you know, okay? All right, cool. And the government will be upon his shoulders. Jesus will reign as King Jesus, King of the world. The government of the entire world is on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful. Why not? He was a wonder. He blows our mind, doesn't he? He blows our mind. He transcends human understanding. He is unique among human beings. He stands supreme above everyone else. His name is wonderful because he is. Have you not, have you not read through Scripture and sit there and go, Jesus, just say you're gone and just flick him off the face of the earth. Don't you want to? I remember watching uh, Facing the Giants, one of the Hendrix Brothers' movies. It's a movie. It's a movie. Okay? It is a movie. I said that once. I said it again. It's a movie. But I remember showing that in one of the churches that I served, and there was 80, 90-year-old women in that church when they were playing football, and they actually stood up and went, Go! 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 <laughs> Y'all, chill. But the, 
we, we, we look at that in the stories and going, Jesus, just do something else. Do something here. This is what we would do. And he's probably sitting there going, yeah, I know, but you're not Christ. Because he's called counselor as well. Jesus reveals the mind of God. He counsels from God's perspective. Mighty God, in, his, in him dwells all the fullness of the deity in bodily form. Colossians 2 verses 9 through 10 says, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. Everlasting Father means the Father of eternity. All the ages meet in him. Hebrews 1, 1 through 4 says, In the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets as many times and in various ways. But in these days, last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, so he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. And Prince of Peace, his reign upon the earth will happen. There will be peace. I know it doesn't sound like it's going to happen, isn't it? But there will be peace. He is our peace child. He is the answer. He is the exaltation. He is it. And it all began with prophecy. As our first of the Advent series, the P's of Advent, it began with prophecy. He was foretold. Both Old Testament and New Testament promised the coming of Jesus Christ. God keeps his word. He came the first time and he'll come again. Emmanuel, God with us. But see, you've got to have faith in that. Because faith is going to keep you going. I, I love this story. It says, years ago, a hydro, hydroelectric dam was to be built across the valley in Maine. The people in the town were to be re, 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 blah, 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 relocated, and the town itself submerged. During the time between the initial decision and the completion of the dam, the town, which had once been well kept, fell into disrepair. Why keep it up now? Explain one resident, and I love this line, where there is no faith in the future, there is no work in the present. We need to keep the faith because we have work to do. Because we have the prophecy that Christ is coming again. But in the midst of what Isaiah, there's a battle. What's the battle that you're going? What is the battle that you are fighting? Sick loved ones, natural disasters, past pains and endured, worries threaten to drown us. Often we stand alone or we feel that struggle. If you are in that place today, I want to remind you that God stands beside you whispering, I am with you. I love this picture. Because if you look at this picture and if you could see it real close, you would understand the gentleman who's standing there in agony and Christ is behind him. He's holding the hammer in one hand and the nails in the other. It's our sins that put Jesus on the cross. But Jesus is sitting there and you know he's probably whispering in his ear, I'm with you. I'm with you. He stood with the people whose king, King Ahaz, refused God. He said, I'm with you. And Oswald Chambers has this quote. The remarkable thing about God is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you don't fear God, you fear everything else. Bless you. If you do not fear God, you fear everything else. What are your fears? See... I think part of our prophecy that we can understand is this. Satan's time is limited. Satan realizes 
that he's lost. So his struggle right now is to gain everybody and cause all kind of chaos before that ultimate thing happens. We need to look old smut face in the mouth and sit there and go, leave me be. And how can we empower that? What Christ did for us. What Christ did for us. He did this in a mighty way. Jesus gathered his friends one night. He went through a litany that he was supposed to go through, and then he changed it. He took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, Take and eat. For this is my body which is given for you. Not broken for you, given for you. He did it willingly. Why? Because that's the plan. I know sometimes we look as kids probably, we're going, oh good, we're celebrating Advent, we're celebrating the birth, but see brothers and sisters, you got to see past the cradle and see the cross. He did it for us. When supper was over, he took a cup, and again he gave thanks. And he gave it to them and said, take and drink, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Will you bow your heads for a minute? Almighty and gracious God, we ask for your blessings of these elements of bread and juice. May they be for us the body and the blood of Christ. Connect us, O Lord. Connect us one with each other and one with you. We ask for your blessings. It's in your holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. So I'm going to ask that the, the people of the praise team that would come forward first, and we will serve you. Uh, first and then they will they will begin playing and and you just come follow in okay again if you are unable to come forward just hold your hand out and let me know okay the body of christ broken for you no, no, give that Savior, sit 
Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Yeehaw. There you are. There you are. <laughs> Thank you for worshiping with us today. God loves you, and there's not a thing you can do about it. So, in that, go in the expression of love, show Christ to this world. Show them to your families, your neighbors, to a complete stranger. And if you have to, use words. Go in his grace. Amen.